Black Stars assistant coach George Poiting has offered some insight into the Ghana Black Stars team and the changes they made at halftime versus the Nigerian Super Eagles. He mentioned some interesting changes that they made that brought victory to the Black Stars at halftime. Coach of the Black Stars, Otoado, has talked about his future with the national team moving forward. After the World Cup draw has been held, Otoado has revealed uh, where his future lies with the Black Stars. We'll be looking at all that today and he paid a visit to his community in Bubuashi, who he thanked after the World Cup uh, qualification for the support they gave him when he was growing up. We'll look at all that today as usual. Subscribe if you have not. Uh, click on the notification bell to get more updates. Before we look into that technical breakdown by George Watting on the Ghana Black Stars saying how they did it at halftime versus the Nigerian Super Eagles to secure that qualification to the World Cup which has brought us into this our group uh, versus Portugal, South Korea and Uruguay. Uh, Otoado paid a visit to his hometown, uh, not his hometown, but his roots, uh, Bubuashi, a uh, suburb in Accra where he grew up. He paid homage to the society uh, that supported him from his childhood. The Ghana Black Stars interim coach was basking in glory after guiding the Black Stars to the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Uh, the Borussia Dortmund assistant coach has been hailed by Ghanaians after plotting the country's first return to the global stage. Atoado returned to his boyhood neighborhood in Bubuashi, a suburb in the capital Accra, to pay homage to the society that offered him support during his upbringing. It was a scene of joy and ecstasy as scores of people thronged onto the street to welcome one of their own. Ado is the first Ghanaian footballer to qualify for the World Cup both as a player and as a coach. The 46-year-old guided the Black Stars to the World Cup on a way go rule at the expense of the Nigerian Super Eagles. The four-time African champions forced a 1-1 draw at the Moshut Obiola Stadium. This momentous feat has etched him into the name of Ghana football history for a very long time. Ghana became the first African country to reach Qatar 2022. However, there were ugly scenes at the end which has led to the ban of the Nigerian Super Eagles Stadium. Moshit Obiola. Talking about his future as well, Otoado reiterated that his future with the Black Stars will have to be reassessed. He said, My stay was for two games against Nigeria. We need to discuss this with the Ghana FA and my club at Dortmund. I would like to continue and be at the World Cup with Ghana. Hopefully, we find solutions. So that is Otoado's look on things here. He says that they will have to sit down and discuss things and find solutions to how they will manage it. As I said in my previous two videos on the future of the Ghana Black Stars technical team and it possibly being dissolved, all these coaches we called have clubs, except for Chris Hutton, George Boateng, Masudidi Dramani, they have clubs they work with. Then we had to negotiate with those clubs to get them to calm down and coach our team during these playoffs. So, if anything, if we want them to come down and be in charge of, well, first of all, the AFCON qualifiers and then the World Cup itself, we will need to renegotiate with them and try to get them on board in trying to get us into the World Cup proper. The president wants all coaches maintained. It is not as straightforward as Henry Asante Chum Communications Director has explained in my previous video. We look at George Boateng and his insights into that second half decision that got Ghana the victory versus the Nigerian Super Eagles. The Black Stars were in a fix after the 1 1 halftime result. Well, Toado and the whole technical team decided to take a decision. Let's listen to George Boateng explaining what happened exactly with the Black Stars team after they were drawn 1 1 at halftime versus Nigeria at the Moshut Udabiola Stadium in Abuja. Let's have a listen to what George Boate said concerning the changes. It, it, it's brilliant because Otto was, was instrumental in that decision, I have to say. Because Otto, since 1st of February, said when we had the initial meeting, said, OK, the first game we can play 4-3-3. Um, but in the second leg, I want to change it to 361 or 3511. 
that was already discussed first meeting we had mm. with Otto and Chris and Didi and Richard so we decided that we'll start with 433 four, and then the second leg will change it however because uh, the players did so well in Kumasi and took on the style and the system and the formation so well we decided not to change it for now but it was always in the back of our head and also in Accra we did tactical sessions on the 3511 or 3611 yeah. formation uh, sorry I, I shouldn't forget it should be actually 13511 okay. uh, uh, so we did work on that uh, tactically uh, we did work on it through the analysis so we were gradually embedding the idea that we might change it to that formation. Mm. So because the players did well at uh, Kumasi in the first leg, we decided to keep it. But in the back of our head, yeah. we knew already what we were going to do if things didn't go as planned. Mm. If we did not concede the penalty, we would have stuck to the formation. Mm. But when we looked at uh, the situation, the Nigerian team was pushing more. And then Otto said, George, Chris, Didi, let's do it. We have only one game. This is it. We won't get another chance. Let's do it. We said, okay. Then we had to move really fast because the remaining players were out doing warm-up. And then the 11 was already inside. So Otto said, George, you, you take care of the ones outside. Go outside, prepare them, give them the set pieces, the role, the responsibility. Make sure they are ready. So we got the names. I said to Didi, okay, Didi, let's sort out the set pieces. So Didi sorted out with me. I quickly ran outside. I informed Kofi, Andy, and... Uh, Elisha? Yeah. Uh, Usu. Yeah. I informed them what they were to do. Did quick warm up with them again, prepare them. Uh, and it was really a teamwork because half of the staff, Chris stayed with, with Otto inside to make sure that the 11 knows what was happening. Me and Didi were on the grass, making sure that the three coming on understand what's happening, mm. which position they are playing, what's their role in the set pieces, for, against. So together we put it together. Everybody was on point. We knew it and we were pretty much, as you saw, in control the whole of second half. So there you had it there from George Boateng. Quite an interesting one there on the decision to make those changes at halftime and it goes to show you how there is power in unity in decision making and two heads or more being better than one i have to say great insight into the decision to make those changes he said if they were one zero at halftime probably they would have maintained it but that draw from the nigerian super eagles necessitated that which helped them control the game further in the second half nigeria was getting back into the game and that is how they sought to really get hold of it george Boating also went to talk about the fact that he wanted a tough draw for ghana he wanted to face a top side well i think he would be happy with the draw that just ended portugal south korea uruguay ghana would fancy their chances but these teams are experienced in the world cup the black stars will have to have the arcade game to make it through. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments box on everything. Have a great evening.